Hello friends, this is a podcast to show you how to put numbers into a list on the TI-83 or 84 calculator and how to do one variable stats. If you're in my AP stats class, this is example, uh, this is actually problem 1.5 on page 48. These are reading scores for third graders, uh, DRP scores is what they're called. And if you're taking a different class, it doesn't matter. You can still learn how to do the, do the math on the calculator. So, calculator is open. First thing we're going to do to get to the list is hit the stat key and the enter. Uh, that's just going to say edit lists. And there I am. Now I have values in my lists already. If I want to clear the lists, I go up onto the label of the list. I hit clear and then enter and the numbers are gone. And at this point, I just start punching in the numbers followed by the enter key. 40, enter. 26, enter. Uh, at this point, you can see, I'm just going to go through and put all 44 of these numbers in the calculator. Uh, even though they're written in two lists here on my little note page, I'm still going to put all 44 of them in one list. So I'm going to pause and finish and then restart. All right, 43, 45, and I'm done. Now notice each time I move a cell down, I get L1, which is a list, and then the number of them in. So if I put another number in here, I'd be that'd be the 45th number. So I have 44 numbers in this list. And that's a handy thing to know sometimes. All right, if I want to do my one variable stats with this set of numbers, clear this. I'm going to go back to the stat key. I'm going to make one right arrow over to the calc menu and I'm going to hit the number 1 for one var of stats. Now this defaults to list L1. So if you don't put anything else, it'll just go but if you have your numbers in any other list, you actually have to put in the list. I'm going to put the L1, even though I don't have to do it in this case. And when I hit Enter, I get two pages of numbers. Okay, this uh, is the first page, and if I down arrow, I get the second page. Now I'm going to copy these into that notebook and then talk about what each one is. All right, and with the full layout before us, X bar, and that's how it said, X bar is the mean. It's the average. So what they did is add up all the numbers... So all, 40, all of these numbers, 44 of them, 44 right here, that's how many were in the list. And I added up, and when I added them up, that's what I got. Sum, 1533. So to get the mean, I actually did the sum of all the numbers, all the x's, divided by how many there were, n. And that gave me the mean. This is the sum of the squares. This is used to find the standard deviation. So both of these are standard deviations. The S sub X right here, this is the one that we use if we're talking about a sample. So if this 44 numbers was a sample, which this is of third graders, this is the standard deviation I'd use. If this was an entire population, then I would use this standard deviation. The reason that the top one is a little bit larger is that it allows for sampling variability so more variation than if I had a population I would be able to describe exactly how much variability there would be alright this is still n the sample size and here what I get what's called the five number summary alright and the five number summary includes the smallest number in the set which is 14 the highest number in the set which in this case is 52 the middle number in the set if I put them in order which is 35 the first quartile right here that is the midway point of the lower half so because there's 44 there's 22 in each half and this is the middle point so I had to take the 11th and 12th numbers and average them and the Q3 is the midway point of the upper half so I did the same thing I had 22 in the upper half I took the 11th and 12th numbers and averaged them okay so between these two numbers is the lowest quarter of data. Between these two is the second quarter of data. Between these two is the third quarter. And this is the highest quarter of the data.